Today's show is brought to you by Delicious Obsessions. Real food, real life, and real delicious. Deliciousobsessions.com. You're listening to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, which can be found on our website at treyerwilderness.com and also on iTunes. Welcome to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, where we are homesteading traditionally 100% off-grid today and offering preparedness and survival tips for tomorrow. Here's your host, Tammy Treyer. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for listening to Mountain Woman Radio. I am really excited today for two reasons. One, the sun is shining. We have had gray days and hit our rainy season Uh, about a week and a half ago, and it's been dreary and rainy ever since, and it tends to, uh, I don't know, I'm as solar-powered as my house, I need sunshine, so, but all is good, and uh, getting ready for our winter out here, Uh, our deer season was in, and we have uh, two deer in the freezer right now, and hoping to get two more yet this season, so all is going good though, and lining up for our new year, and real excited um, because of the things our guest has to share for the new year. We have a return guest today, a very dear friend of mine, Jessica Espinoza, is joining me from deliciousobsessions.com and 20dishes.com, and without further ado, I'm just going to introduce her. She is my was my coffee guru. She was the one I was purchasing the wonderful herbal coffees from. Now she has a wonderful book where she relinquishes her coffee recipes so the whole rest of the world can enjoy them and and you can learn how to play with some herbs. So her book is an awesome resource and I definitely encourage you to check that out. And you can find that in our The Treyer Wilderness 2015 Gift Giving Guide, which you can simply find at treyerwilderness.com slash gift guide. But without further ado, um, welcome Jessica. So glad to have you. Hi, Tammy. Thanks for having me back. I'm really excited to talk to you today. Absolutely. We always, we always have good stuff to talk about. And Jessica is just like I am. She's, just, she's crazy and always doing something new and digging into awesome, <laughs> awesome new things. So we like feed off of each other, I think, at times. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> There's always way too many things to do and not enough hours in the day. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, why don't you share with my audience um, what you do at Delicious Obsessions and and your 20 dishes? Sure. Um, Delicious Obsessions is a real food and natural living website. I started that back in 2010. Um, I actually just started it as a way for me to catalog my own recipes because I would take things to like a potluck or to a family meal and People like, oh, I want the recipe for this, and I would have the recipe written down on little scraps of paper all over my kitchen. <laughs> so <laughs> it was really hard to give them the recipe. So I was like, okay, well, I'll just start a website and put everything on there. And so, um, you know, it really started out like that. And then, you know, 2010 was really when kind of the real food, traditional food movement was kind of hitting its peak, and there was a lot of momentum growing around that time. And so I got really interested in, you know, eating locally and, you know, traditional fats and, um, you know, the Weston A. Price Foundation and all of that stuff. So I, you know, read Nourishing Traditions and all that and kind of got into like the food politics stuff. And then it just started kind of evolving from there because as I went through it and, um, you know, was, you know, cooking more and becoming more aware of what I was putting in my body and using in my house, I realized there was so much more to like creating health than just recipes, just cooking. So it really just kind of evolved into like all things natural living. So I've got tons of health and wellness articles, do it yourself tutorials, recipes, everything on there. So um, it's just kind of grown into its own beast sometimes <laughs> <laughs> it is awesome though you have so many resources and that's so funny with the recipes because I am I was so there 
I actually had to go to the extent of creating my own cookbook so that I'd have my recipes right? in one place. Right. <laughs> But that's awesome, and, and, and you also do your YouTube channel as well to complement your website. Yeah, I, um, I actually made that a goal at the beginning of 2015. I said, you know what, I'm going to do video this year. <laughs> I had been wanting to do videos for a long time, and I was just too chicken. <laughs> and then, um, you know, one day I was out for my walk, and I was just like, you know what, I'm going to shoot a video right now, and I'm going to put it on my YouTube channel, and I'm just going to get going. And so I shot it, and, like, every time I shot a new video, it got easier and easier, and um, and I got less fearful of being on camera. So, um, yeah, so I have <laughs> done a whole bunch of videos this year, and I kind of had to take a break this summer. I kind of had some health setbacks and just haven't had the energy to keep up on the the, I was trying to do like, you know, two or three videos a week, but, um, you know, there's a lot that goes into video. So yeah. hopefully, um, after the first of the year, I can start doing some more, but, um, but that's a lot of fun. I've actually, I kind of enjoy doing videos more than writing blog posts now because it's a lot easier for me to just get on camera and just start talking than <laughs> to have to sit down and actually formulate all of my thoughts and put them in writing and then edit it and all of that stuff. So yeah. <laughs> I actually kind of like the videos better. <laughs> I totally get that. I do understand your fear of the video though. Regular videos didn't scare me. Anything that I can edit, I'm good. But the per uh -huh. Periscope scares me to death. I've tried at least 10, 15 times to get out in my yard, but there's always chaos at my house and I never know what kind of interruption I'm going to have. So, right. And, and yeah, lives, Periscope, is, yes, Periscope is actually my next, my next thing. I've been pretty chicken with that because, you know, it's kind of a more intimate look at your life. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping I have a friend actually who's, she's like just, hops on Periscope and is running with it. And she's like, let me know when you're ready because I'm going to give you like the Periscope 101 and make sure that you'll just totally rock it when you're ready. But um, yeah, I'm, I've had that one on the back burner for like three months. Like I see all these other people and I, I watch their videos and I love them. But for some reason, I haven't quite figured out like how that's going to fit for me. So <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. I hear that. And when you, when you connect with your friend for the Periscope 101, give her my name. <laughs> Okay, I will. Maybe she should teach a course. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, the things, see, we, we're, being, we're being very truthful here, folks. This is reality. We have our fears, too. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Boy. <laughs> Speaking of fears, you folks, if you haven't listened to last week's show, you need to. That, that definitely sums up all of mine in one show. But... Uh, <laughs> Since we're, we're talking with Jessica here, why don't you share also with us about your uh, 20 dishes? Because that is something that I just think is an awesome, awesome opportunity for a lot of people. Oh, absolutely. So, um, yeah, I have a site that I uh, co-created with two other uh, bloggers and wellness educators. And, you know, we polled our communities. I tr we tried to do regular polls of our readers and everything. We, we want to know, like, what... Um, what their pain points are, you know, what kind of information can we provide that would make their lives easier? Right. And so when we did this survey um, back in early 2014, the overwhelming response was meal planning and meal prep, like eating healthy is just, it's too much work, it's overwhelming, especially when you've got, you know, both parents working a lot of the time, you know, every they have soccer practice and they have all the stuff that they have to do after work, so getting a healthy meal on the table from scratch is really hard for a lot of families. So um, we actually came up with the site. It's based on um, kind of a program that my um, co-founder, Orlitha, had been using herself. She created it for herself when she was a young mom and also working and, um, and really kind of helped her keep her sanity. So we kind of just evolved that into the 20 Dishes site. So the easiest way to explain 20 Dishes is it's um, – like meal planning meets batch cooking. So we have a very specific formula for you to follow, and the goal is to get you um, in and out of the kitchen with a week's worth of dinners prepped in under 60 minutes. And so we provide you with weekly meal plans, um, like menus that you can choose from, but you can also build your own menu or you can customize the ones that we already made for you. Um, and then we also give you your shopping list and a step-by-step -step prep where we walk you through everything that you need to do to prep those dinners in under 60 minutes. So say you pick Sunday as your prep day, um, you would print off, you would go to the grocery store and get all of your stuff, yep. 
Um, and then you would come home and you would follow our step-by-step prep. And that is specifically designed to get that, those meals done and prepped in under an hour so that you have everything just ready to go. You can run home after work and you can pull everything out of the fridge, toss it in the pan or however um, it needs to be prepared, and you can get dinner on the table in about 20 minutes. Um, so you have everything already prepped, like chopped vegetables and all of that stuff. So, um, you know, really we want to help make eating healthy eating accessible to more people and less frustrating so that people stick with it because there's a lot of people that – you know, they, they want to switch to real food and they want to eat healthy, but they they try it and they feel like it's too it's either too expensive or it's too overwhelming or it takes too much time. Okay. And then they kind of gravitate back towards like a standard American diet. And we want to make sure that people are able to transition off those standard American diets and start eating healthy and really maintain it for the long term, making it a lot easier for them. So That's awesome. Um, That's yeah, we love it. And we We're actually rolling out some really exciting things um, after the first of the year. Um, We're going to actually start hosting um, workshops, local workshops. So we actually are going to have some kitchen advisors all over the country. And so, uh, you know, if you happen to be in a city where one of the advisors is, then you can have, um, you could either host, um, if you could have the advisor come to your house and you can invite your friends and family and um, coworkers and neighbors and they will actually demonstrate our system. So uh, they'll prep a week's worth of dinners in under an hour. They'll show you in real time how it works, and you can ask questions and all of that stuff. So we're really excited about this addition to um, to the 20 Dishes uh, platform because I think it's going to be able to get uh, healthy eating in front of so many more people. And there's a lot of people that just learn by seeing someone in person. Like we have – the training videos and everything on our site and we show you how to do it. But sometimes it's just nice to have somebody there in person with you showing you how to do things. So, yeah. um, yeah. yeah, so we're, well, that should be coming out sometime in January of 2016. So, um, we're super excited about that. I think awesome. it's going to be awesome. I think so too. And you, you hit the nail on the head there that you will be reaching so many more people because so many people, even when we survey our audience, you know, so many more people want to have the hands on, now, I don't, right. I don't like to leave my home a whole lot. We've become hermits back here. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, the weather in the wintertime is tough, and that's usually when we have time, mm-hmm. like spare time to go do something. So, you know, you have people that like the videos. You have others that want the hands-on, and you're covering all bases, mm-hmm. which is just phenomenal. And the other thing that comes to mind for me always when I hear a Whole Foods diet, you know, there's there's the preppers in the world. There's the homesteaders and the natural health. And the thing is, you can stock up on all of that freeze dried and processed foods in a, for a survival situation, but for a long term situation, for one, that's gonna that's gonna go out of your pantry, and second of all, mm-hmm. then what do you do? So having that whole foods background and the whole foods um, concept of being able to prepare your meals, the other thing is growing those things. So mm-hmm. you know, this is so huge, and I think that you know the young kids today do not know how to cook. So getting this out there where it could be even mother daughter type things, you know, where they get together and and learn how to do this stuff. So that's just phenomenal. Absolutely. And you totally touched on something that is a really big passion of mine. And one of the main reasons that I'm so excited about it is because we have, you know, like two generations now of people who really don't know the fundamentals um, of, of kitchen prep and of just even how to make stock like, you know, bone broth and things like that, because, those basic kitchen skills are not being passed down generation to generation like they were in the past. So, you know, we do have mothers and daughters that don't know how to cook. So this is a great opportunity to not only give these people life skills and things that will make their lives easier, but also, you know, improve that bond. I mean, between not only your family, but if you had friends and if you wanted to get little a little prep group together on a Sunday that was just maybe you and your closest girlfriends or something, like way to bond and to have fun and to eat healthy. So that that different dimensions to what this can bring to the community, the local communities that we'll be working in. So absolutely. And you know what? Um Oftentimes we neglect to think of the guys. My husband is an amazing cook, and true, and that is because he was out in the back country and cooking in cast iron skillets and Dutch ovens, and so he's a really good cook. But 
Awesome. My son has been in the kitchen with me from as soon as he could be, that he could stand and be on a stool or a chair with me. And, you know, mm -hmm. the other day we were just discussing it. You know, he goes and he gets his own lunch during the day because we homeschool and, and gets his breakfast and that. And, you know, I said, I could be a good mom and I could make all those meals, but I wouldn't be doing you a justice because at some point you are going to move out and you're going to need to know how to care for yourself. And he thanked me for that because, you know, the mm -hmm. skills he has now are because he, t you know, he was in the kitchen with me. He loves to can. He loves to be in the kitchen when I'm baking stuff. He makes cookies and p cakes on his own now. So, you know, you guys <laughs> out there can get together with your boys. It's also a great bonding experience. You may not be lighting a fire or doing something manly, but you'll know how to feed yourself. And and those are skills your guys need to have. If their wife's sick, somebody needs to make the food, right? <laughs> Very true. I was just getting ready to say that he is going to make some lovely lady really happy in the future. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that is a good reason for moms um, or dads, whoever, you know, is cooking in the family or both of them in yeah. a perfect world yeah. um, to make sure the kids are in the kitchen and especially the boys, because I think, you know, we still have kind of that stereotypical idea um, in our culture that the women are the ones that do the cooking, even today. So I think the more men and the more boys that we can teach how to cook, I mean, mm. you're right, because the women, honestly, the caregivers, their health is the first ones to suffer. I know right. so many mothers who are dealing with severe health problems right now, and the husbands really have to pick up the slack when yeah. it comes to taking care of the kids and getting the meals on the table. So yeah. Why not make sure that they're armed and prepared to be able to do that? Should something happen, I I, I hope that, that, you know, nothing would happen, but right. you never know. Right. God forbid so. it would, but that's such a truth. And and the other thing is, too, in, in our society today, everybody's working. The wife, the husband's mm -hmm. working. So, you know, it's still expected that the woman comes home and cooks, but if in the event that that's not the case, you know, to be able to shuffle it and share the responsibility is, is a huge thing. And absolutely. And just knowing how to feed ourselves and to be able to, you know, take a, to walk away from the grocery store and all that box stuff and be able to prepare something that you pull out of your garden is so huge. So, so huge. Uh huh. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I think, when when you release that, we will have you have to let me know so that I can uh, just put a blurb out on here and let people know that that is available because that is huge and just the meal planning in itself. You know, so many people. You know, even I get stumped sometimes, or I get a week where I'm really, really burdened with work, and it gets really tricky to you know, prepare things. I, I have a tendency to just wake up in the morning and know that I'm going to pull out a roast and that's what we're having for the meal for the day and, and just throw it all together and call it good. I do cook a lot on my wood stove and in the sun oven, so that does make it convenient. But, you know, you do hit those times where you you end up throwing things together at the last minute. And it's nice to be a little prepared and to, and to really plan things out in advance. I don't always do that. Mm -hmm. and I know the benefits are there, you know. Right, right, yep. But you've got so, so many other things going on. I'd like to take a quick break. <laughs> so many things. I love it. I'm going to take a quick break so we can hear some words from our sponsors, and we'll come back and you can share the rest of the goodies you've got to share. <laughs> Stay tuned. The new Pioneer Magazine, taking the skills and techniques of yesteryears and combining it with solar, hydroponics, and various other advancements of today, creating the most robust pioneering magazine on the market. In addition to the new Pioneer magazine, they also have available the American Frontiersman magazine, taking you back to a more primitive time, and both magazines can be found at newpioneermag.com. Get your copies today and be prepared for tomorrow. Do you have a loved one, or are you suffering from celiac disease or a gluten intolerance? Trying to find that perfect flour? Whether you are baking cookies, flaky pie crusts, or baking breads from scratch, or you are looking for a quick cake from a package, Look no further. Better Batter offers non-GMO gluten-free products with an assortment of packaged items as well as flour packaged in varying sizes, including their bulk sizes, perfect for those of you that are practicing your preparedness skills. Better Batter is not just another gluten-free flour. It's what you have been searching for. Visit betterbatter.org. 
Do you have your free digital subscription to Prepare Magazine yet? If not, then hurry over to preparemag.com and start getting each monthly issue sent directly to your inbox. It's easy. All you have to do is go to preparemag.com, enter your name and email address, and you're subscribed. Consider signing up for the premium membership for past issues and exclusive resources. You can even subscribe to the beautiful print version of Prepare Magazine. Visit preparemag.com and choose the option that's most valuable to you. Prepare Magazine, encouraging, empowering, and enriching your journey. Okay, we are back, and again, we are speaking with Jessica Espinoza of deliciousobsessions.com as well as 20dishes.com, and she has been sharing some of the amazing things she's got coming out in January, but I know there's more, so I'm going to just let her share the rest (laughs) of the goodies she's got going on. (laughs) Yes, there's a lot. I, um, you know, I was telling you before we actually started recording the show that I just have kind of been in this place this year of you know, not really knowing what direction to take my business. And, you know, I've kind of lost some of my joy and my mission to help people. And so I really spent a lot of time trying to figure out what direction I want to go. So, um, you know, I really, I, I love helping people. And so coaching was naturally um, one of the avenues that I wanted to pursue. So I actually I'm finishing up um, my certification for the 21-Day Sugar Detox. I'll be a certified coach for that. And um, if you're not familiar with that, it's a simple but effective program that helps um, essentially curb your sugar addictions and balance your blood sugar and kind of get you like a kickstart to eating whole foods and reducing the amount of um, the amount of sugar that you're you're consuming. So um, it was created by um, Diane Sanfilippo. Um, of the Balance Bites site, and she has a special program where she certifies coaches to actually lead, um, you know, we could have local, we could work with people locally and have local workshops, or we could do just, you know, online workshops as well. So I'm really excited about that, and I will be finishing up the certification for that um, probably around the 1st of December, and then I will be hosting my first, it'll be my beta group for the 21 day sugar detox starting in January. So that'll be the first group workshop that I'll lead. And so we'll all go through the 21 day sugar detox together. Um, You know, what better way to kick off the new year than to do just, you know, the holidays are coming up and we're all going to be overindulging. I have no doubt that it even is, good as I try to eat, I'm going to be eating too many sweets. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we'll just kick off the new year and, you know, kind of get things back on track. Um, it's essentially a paleo platform. Um, as far as the diet goes, it's just a little more dialed in because you really limit your fruit mm-hmm. and you also are not going to be eating any sweeteners or anything. And even things like um, your non-nutritive sweeteners like stevia, she has you cut those out for a full 21 days as well so that you're not yeah. triggering that that sweet response. Anytime you eat something sweet, there's kind of a, um, a body reaction to that so you can start craving more. So even with the sweet, um, the like stevia and stuff that doesn't have a direct impact on your blood sugar, it can still trigger you to want to eat more sweets. So we do eliminate um, all of the sweeteners and we eliminate a lot of the fruit and everything. Okay. Um, but it's just a clean, you know, a paleo style of eating. And then once you're done with it, um, it also is a great way to identify whether you maybe have some food sensitivities to certain things. Like if you decided to maybe eliminate eggs for 21 days and kind of see how you're feeling, we will also talk about how to like reintroduce certain foods after the 21 days so that you can maybe see if you've got any sensitivities and then you can start reintroducing those foods and then kind of figure out, um, you know, what format you want your diet to take after that. But hopefully it will kind of wean you off that sugar and get you to a place where you're just, you're not craving sugar anymore um, and not needing it um, like you were before. So this is so I'll have awesome. my beta group for that starting in January. Awesome. I am like so excited. I already raised my hand on her beta group. As soon as she <laughs> mentioned it, <laughs> I, I have always craved sugar. When I don't feel well, the sugar is the first mm-hmm. thing I crave, not that I go after it because I too, like, like you, you are really trying to watch what I eat. Stevia is the only sugar or honey. We have our own honey, so it's hard not to go towards that because it does have a lot of medicinal properties to mm-hmm. it. But those are the two I go for and so to eliminate stevia completely as well, that means I'll be twitching for the first week of the 21 days. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard because I'm kind of the same way. Um, I do use some of the sugar alcohols on occasion, 
Um, but stevia is my main sweetener, and I do use a little bit of molasses every now and then um, just for the mineral content that molasses has. But, you know, that's not something that you just, like, put a spoonful of molasses in your tea. That doesn't <laughs> always it right. tastes so great. So, <laughs> right. so that's more of a, um, a medicinal sweetener, I guess, if you want to call it that. But um, the stevia is hard. Um, that The first time I ever did the 21 Day Sugar Detox, the program, I actually did it with um, a coach um, earlier this year. And uh, it was tough to give up the stevia, too. So, um, I yeah, I completely feel your pain. And sugar, I'm the same way. Sugar is... I don't even say that I'm a recovering sugar addict at this point because I'm still learning how to manage that addiction. It's really hard. I'll do really, really well for a period of time and then something will happen. You know, I'm a, I'm a, you know, emotional eater. So, you know, if I get too stressed out or say something, you know, bad happens, um, comes up, then, you know, it kind of throws me off my, my good eating. And so sugar is the first thing that I automatically gravitate to. So I, I wanted to do the certification, not only to help other people break that cycle, but to also keep me accountable and to really help me keep my diet as clean as possible. So it is kind of a serving both purposes that's there. Cool. That's cool. And that's, that's what, you know, that's, that's the beauty of it is that we help ourselves, but then we pay it forward. And I just think that that's true mm-hmm. in all that you're doing, and I think it's so awesome because you do so much research on your website, like for your um, autoimmune disease and everything. I just think that's so awesome how mm-hmm. you are so open and share all that information. And it's good you're doing this detox in January because this is a funny. I was in my garden every day this summer grabbing um, leaves off of my herbal plants, and it was my spearmint, and um, I'd grab basil and and then I grab my stevia <laughs> to make it right? taste like I had a nice little beverage going on while I was doing my my gardening it was just so refreshing to have that and I love mm-hmm. being able to to grow my own stevia and to grind my own stevia knowing that I'm not getting any of the additives but it's interesting to hear mm-hmm. you say that even that plays a role and I can believe that because it's still something sweet it's still triggering that that need or or filling mm-hmm. that need you know <laughs> Yeah, even if it's not directly impacting your blood sugar, and there's been studies that, that do show that stevia doesn't impact, um, impact blood sugar levels, and the sugar alcohols don't really either, but they can still, um, you know, and it really depends on the person. You know, uh, we all kind of have sweet teeth just because as um, our food has, you know, been corrupted over the last 40 or 50 years with more processed sugars and more processed flours and you know, everything has sugar in it, even if it's not sweet. Yes. And that creates an underlying sugar addiction and that carbohydrate addiction. So yep. for some people, it can be really hard, um, even if that the stevia is not playing a role in their actual blood sugar levels, um, it can still create that psychological response mm-hmm. to sweets and make you want to eat more. So um, that's the reason she specifically designed it this way without even the non-nutritive sweeteners is because um, those can just trigger those psychological responses and make you crave more and more sugar. Absolutely. So, um, mm-hmm. so yeah, it's, it's an awesome program. It's, um, and, you know, people, there's different levels that you can do. There's three different levels. So um, you can really kind of tailor it to your own needs and, um, and kind of where you're at. If you're, you know, still eating dairy, we've got um, – because dairy is kind of a no-no on the paleo, in the paleo world, it's more primal. So we do have a modification if you're still going to be consuming dairy. Um, we've got modifications if you're, you know, pregnant or breastfeeding. We've got modifications if you've got an autoimmune disease, you know, say you need to avoid nightshades and things like that. So we do have different modifications kind of depending on where you're at with your own health. So awesome. um, I'm super excited about it. Oh, so yeah. this should be great. <laughs> I'm excited for you. This is really cool. So many people need that. So many people are struggling mm-hmm. you know, with diabetes and different different illnesses that you know require us to be better stewards of the sugar. And it's hard. Mm-hmm. So to have and to have a beta group and a workshop where you actually have other people that you can um, bond with and support one another is huge too. So that's pretty cool. I really think that's awesome, and I look very forward to that. <laughs> Yes, I'm excited to have you in the group already. <laughs> I will have, um, I don't have it ready yet, but I will have a special newsletter specifically for this. Um, and I'm hoping to get that set up this week. 
So hopefully I can get you, um, if people wanted to sign up or more interested in learning more about it, I can get you that information in case anybody asks. Sure, and I'll, um, I'll include so. it in the next couple shows so that they can sign up for it because I know many people awesome. need that. Um, I was doing a fit health and fitness program. Um, we've done twice, two of them now. And, um, you know, that's everybody's biggest struggle is, you know, how do you eliminate the sugar? How do you eliminate the sugar craving? So, mm-hmm. and proteins are good and they do help you, but if you're not cutting out things completely, so this is great. This will really, I know there's so many people that need it and you have some, you still have such other awesome things going on yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so the last really big thing, um, is I'm going to be going, I start my, um, nutritional therapy consultant program at the nutritional therapy association. I start that at the end of February. Um, and so it's about a nine month program that I'll be doing. So I consider 2016 as my year of education. I'm essentially going back to school. It's been, you know, a decade since I've been (laughs) to school and had to be a student, but, um, I really feel like this is the direction that I'm being called. Um, And I, you know, I already know so much about nutrition just from my own, um, my own research for my own needs and for, you know, the needs of my family and remedies for women, specifically for women um, course as well. That's going to kind of go right along with the nutritional therapy course. I'm going to be doing those kind of simultaneously, which I think is going to complement the nutritional information as well. I know that, Um, The Nutritional Therapy Association, they do touch on herbs some in their program, but in the curriculum, but it's not super in-depth. And I really wanted more kind of woman-focused, in-depth information on herbs to kind of complement that because I use a lot of herbs in my own healing journey. And I really, truly believe that, I mean, herbs, we have the tools available to heal ourselves. We just need to know what those tools are and how to use them properly. So. I feel like that's going to give me kind of a little boost of information that's going to help me be able to work with women on a deeper level and help them more. Um, So, yes, those are the last two things uh, (laughs) that I've got going on. I think those two things alone and uh, coupled with the 21 Day Sugar Detox uh, workshops, I mean, that's going to keep me hopping for 2016. So, (laughs) (laughs) It sounds like it. And it's so so cool um, how God implants people in our lives because – the people closest to me, we are just so alike. Like you and I, I'm taking the mm-hmm. herbal class right now to be certified in herbal mm-hmm. medicine also because for the same purposes as you, that I, it, it's to, in an effort to be able to know, for one, what to do for my family, two, to help heal mm-hmm. my family. And I've had such oddities with my health over the last couple of years. And in, in the research, it just keeps leading me in that direction. And this is something that I've always been involved in since I was 14. I was in... I was introduced to uh, natural medicines and it just has always awed me. And, you know, God put everything on the planet for a reason and it's there at our fingertips. We just need to, like you said, just need to know how to use it. And I, that just awes mm-hmm. me and I, I just want to dig in and learn more. So I think that's really awesome. And, and it's, I always say it's, you know, so important to keep learning. I, I will be six feet under when I stop learning because I just right. have that, that <laughs> desire to keep you know digging my feet in and, with herbal medicines, there's just so much to learn, and I just I'm fascinated mm-hmm. by it. I just love it, and and it's nice to be able to pass this uh, this stuff on and be able to help others. So, you know, I I think what you're doing is fantastic, and and I will be supporting you the whole way. I just think it's really great, and and um, when you have the link out for your um, newsletter definitely let me know so we can get the okay. audience aware of that because again that's something that's definitely going to affect people and and um for the folks listening you can check her out at deliciousobsessions.com and the 20 dishes.com as well uh, it's just you, you it's endless amounts of information and the key thing when you're looking for information and knowledge is to find sites that have solid valuable good quality information that you know that when you're hitting their site that they've already researched it that you don't have to research it again to make sure what you're reading is correct jessica is a researcher and she puts a lot of hours into the work that she does so utilize it well and and definitely go surf her sites because you will definitely benefit from them Oh, thank you so much for that. I really appreciate those kind words. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a blogger and, and radio host, you know, we I know what time it takes to do all the things we do. And, 
you know, it, it's so funny because, you know, we look at our own schedule and the hours in our day and we don't know how we do what we do, but then we look at other people, you know, and, and, and it's like, wow, how are they doing that? You know, <laughs> I know my practitioner that I'm working with right now, I look at everything that she is tackling and I'm just like, my head spins. I'm like, <laughs> I don't even know how she does it and works with all of her clients and helps, you know, she's really, uh, really kind of a leader in kind of her little niche. And so a lot of practitioners are turning to her for advice on, um, you know, on their further education and how to help their clients. I'm like, how do you keep all this stuff straight? But she loves every second of it. And she has that constant craving for information um, to be able to help people. And that's really you know, that's kind of where I feel like I'm being called because yeah. I've asked for clarity. I've asked God for clarity over the last few months about, you know, really put me to work in an area that's going to make the biggest impact. Yeah. Um, so, and then all of a sudden I just, you know, decided to go in this direction. So I really feel like this is where I need to go right now. So yeah. I'm excited about it. It's going to be great. And what's really cool is when that's the way things um, transpire, the doors will open and it will be such an awesome experience for you. I, I'm, as we talked before the show, you know, I'm experiencing some of the similar things, you know, just uh, God is just opening doors in an incredible way. And I'm just, you know, we both of us have the same type of hearts. We are led to help others and we are seekers of knowledge. And in, in being that kind of a person, we are in constant motion. I, I know that if I, didn't have all these things to do, I would be going crazy. I love being able to, to, <laughs> to help people, you know, and, and yeah. my, my class that will be starting in January, which falls along the same lines is getting organized in a crazy world, because in order to be able to accomplish all the things we do, I feel regardless if it's um, just your day to day work schedule, or you've got a homestead and you got to keep track of that, or you're homeschooling and you need to keep track of that. If you're not organized, things are just always disheveled. And that is my, f my focus for the new year is jumping into the new year and teaching people how to be organized. And granted, I have flaws, but God has just opened up my eyes and totally put my organization process together for me and and I mm -hmm. for the first time in a very long time I feel organized and not scattered and so I am sharing my process in January and then moving right into several other webinars um, and classes that will be uh, introducing my new book how to embrace an off-grid lifestyle so I'm really really excited about that too and it's it's exciting when you have these new things and you're digging into all this information and 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 he opens these doors. I woke up at 4.15 last week in the morning, and he just kept dumping information in my head, and it just awed me. And so it's neat when those things happen, and when you know you're on the right path, mm -hmm. and you're stepping out in faith a lot of times, you know, he will show you mm -hmm. clearly, you know, the direction you need to go in. And, and um, I just think that's so awesome. And I'm just, I'm excited for you. And I'm just excited that we're on similar paths and, and that he's blessed me with your friendship. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I was just thinking, um, I think I probably need to take your organization class. <laughs> my life is going to get really crazy after the new year. So definitely make sure um, that you keep in touch with me whenever your classes and stuff go live so that I can, um, you know, help promote your stuff as well. The off-grid lifestyle will resonate with some of my readers. I got, you know, I kind of have a, a broad um, spectrum of readers, but I do have the off the gridders and the people who are wanting to, um, to really transition to that. So definitely let me know when all that stuff goes up and I can okay. help support you there too. Awesome. I appreciate it. That's very awesome. Thank you. And we're getting, we're running out of time, but I'm so glad we were able to share all this with the audience because these things, like I said, will touch so many people, but if you have any last words of wisdom or guidance or anything else you'd like to share, um, you can gladly do so here before we end the show. Well, I think this is actually how I closed your last one whenever we talked, but I think the biggest thing that I can tell people is if they're making any kind of changes in their life to just take baby steps. Mm -hmm. um, you can't do everything overnight and you also want to make sure that you're not comparing yourself to other people because we're all at different stages 
in our journeys. So you really have to just start where you're at and then take one small little step forward and don't try to do too much at once or else you'll get overwhelmed and frustrated. That's probably the biggest thing that I keep reminding myself on my own journey is that I try, I'm one of those people that just always tries to push, push, push and get all the stuff way out in the head. And then, you know, a lot of times we don't know what's going to happen. So I just have to remind myself, like, I'm doing the best I can do for today, one little step at a time, one day at a time, and just be patient and, and be graceful with yourself too. You know, cut yourself a little slack and, and be loving <laughs> to yourself. Amen. Amen. That is so true because we are our worst critics and we are harder mm-hmm. on ourselves than anybody else. And and sometimes we do get ahead of the train. So it's important, you know, that is such good, good advice. And And comparing yourself to other people, that is so huge. That is something, I don't know why, but I've been very blessed that that is not something of my nature. Um, Just Mm -hmm. that goes all the way back to high school because I watched the, well, the pettiness of girls in high school. And I just didn't want to be part of that. I just wanted to be me. And I'm very grateful because I see so many people comparing themselves to others. And it's really, um, it's detrimental to your health and your well-being because you were made special just the way you are and there's nothing to compare so that is so that is so huge I I, I'm so glad you said that (laughs) awesome yeah I it's something I remind myself of every day so (laughs) yeah Yeah. and and those were awesome words and I'm so grateful that you were able to join me today we had a good time before and during the show (laughs) yes thank you for having me yes you're very welcome and so glad to have you and You guys, thanks so much for listening. I'm so glad to have you. It humbles me greatly every week that you share your time with me because I know how valuable all of our time is. So thank you for joining me. Stay tuned. We have awesome guests and awesome things going on for the holidays. And just uh, want to remind you to just always take time for yourself. Slow down in life and make sure that you're enjoying it and not racing to the next thing. And one of the key things that I have found lately is just putting my focus on God has opened up so, so many doors. So just I'm leaving you with those thoughts for today, but thank you again for joining me. You guys take care. And until our next show, God bless. You're listening to the mountain woman radio show where you will learn something new every week. We hope you enjoyed the show and encourage you to join us at treyerwilderness.com and be sure to connect with us on iTunes. Remember, your reviews on iTunes are very important to us and help us reach more people just like you.